Welcome back to the workshop as we continue assembly on this Van Diemen Formula Ford. And on this episode, as promised, suspension. We've got all suspension arms back from e-coding. They look amazing. We've got the shocks back. We've got everything ready to get the suspension fitted up to this car. We have to start somewhere and we're gonna start at the front of the car. We've got all the front suspension arms laid out. We've got the front push rods, the front steering arms, front shockies, front bell crank, front sway bar, and all the rod ends and hardware laid out to get the front of this car together. And the absolute first thing we need to do is check and inspect the threads in the end of these suspension arms after they've been e-coded. They were, they were inspected before they've been sent away to get coded, but now they've been back. We need to get them cleaned up so we can screw all the rod ends into these suspension arms and then get them onto the car. As we package these suspension arms up to send them off, we had silicon plugs at each end so we wouldn't get damage to the threads when they got blasted or material build up when they got e-coated. And obviously somebody's pulled these plugs out before they've got done and there's quite a lot of material build up around the threads in the end there. So about all we can do, lay them out on a bit of cardboard, get old school and just tap these threads back out to get them back to where they should be. The front lower suspension arms are the secret weapon of this car. These are not a Van Diemen part. These have been custom made to widen the front track and change the geometry to try to cope with the, some of the understeer that these cars naturally have. Now the threads have been fixed up so we can screw some rod ends into the end. On the outer end, they get a spherical ball that's held in by a circlip, so that is absolutely the next thing we need to get in. Once that spherical outer ball is in place, it can't come out. It sits hard against the shoulder up the top and has a circlip in the bottom just to stop it floating around. The upright then sits into the top of that and the upright bolts up from the bottom, so it's all contained. Now, probably the major issue we have with fitting the suspension arms is we have no base point, we have no setup, we have no rod lengths or anything. So all I'm gonna do for an initial setup is to screw the rod ends in about halfway, make sure they're the same both sides. And then once the car's together, we can then do a wheel alignment on it, see where it's gotta be and make all the necessary adjustments from there. The right hand side lower control arm is done. It's got the rod ends in each end, it's screwed into about halfway and the outer ball in. To get this into place, I've just gotta feed it through the chassis a little bit, get it lined up with where it's supposed to be. And it actually mounts all the way in in on the chassis, unlike the upper arm, which mounts on the outside, and you'll, you'll see what that means in a minute. But that's it, that's now in position. You can see it's quite a long arm, and that's the suspension travel we have before the rod ends bind up inside the chassis, which is heaps. We wouldn't use anywhere near that much if, if you've gone up that far, the front tire's well and truly off the ground. So now that that's in, I'll get some bolts in it, I'll sit the other side in, and then the lower control arms are done and we can keep fitting more stuff. Both lower control arms are now on. And the front mounting, it's in just behind the master cylinders and the rear mounting is in almost next to the driver's leg, so in quite a fair way. Now follow me on this, but the next thing I want to do is put the push rods on this. I don't want to keep stacking weight onto this suspension arm while it's just hanging off the ends. We will no doubt do damage to it. They are very lightweight. So I think the next thing we need to do is get the shockies in, the rockers in, and then we can get the push rods in to support the weight of the suspension arm. And then we can keep stacking weight onto this without doing any damage to this lower control arm. So the next up is therefore the bell cranks or the rockers or whatever you want to call them. These transfer the load from the outside of that lower control arm to the rocker which mounts to the stub on the chassis and then transfers that to the shocky which mounts back here on the chassis. These are, like I was saying when we did the rears, they're a very nice bit of gear, very well made and have roller bearings. 
to try to eliminate any breakaway load that there may be that could give you an inconsistent suspension uh, settings or suspension setup just to really make the, everything as smooth as absolutely possible. These have been cleaned up, they need to be greased. We'll grease them now. We've got thrust washers and then a hardened plate for those roller thrust washers to mount to. All cleaned up, we can pack these full of grease and get them mounted to the car. The front left hand bell crank is on and it's super smooth and does everything it should. The right hand one's ready to be fitted and yes, they've been greased with the KCK Zero Melt Grease and it's the, the perfect choice for this. It won't move from where we put it, it's not going to run, it's not going to go crusty or turn into mud like some of the other products do. It's going to offer all the corrosion protection we need, all the lubrication we need and it's got a high shear strength, it will handle the load on these no problem at all. It's the perfect choice for the race cars, for wheel bearings, whatever. We use it in absolutely everything. Bell cranks are done. They're on there, tightened up, ready to go. So next up is the shockies. For those who haven't seen the episode on shocks, you should definitely check it out. The guys from AME go into a fair bit of detail on what's actually inside these things and how they work. Also what they change to modify them and explain it. Probably the best I've ever heard. I, I really appreciated their time. But the next thing we can fit up is the shocks. Shocks simply mount in to the back of the bell crank and to the chassis. Should be really simple to get them in there, so let's do it. The shocks are on the car and all bolted up and it's great to have something that's not black on the car, something a bit shiny with a bit of colour to it. Now, I've put the shocks this certain way. The shock can go either way, I can turn it around, I can do whatever I like. And what I'd like to hear from you guys is which way do you think the shock should be mounted? Have, have I got it right or have I got it wrong and why? We had some great comments in the last video about the orientation of the brake calipers, which I certainly got me thinking. But I, I wanna hear your guys' theory on why I should have the shocks this way or the other way around and why. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you why I put them this way and you can tell me if I'm wrong or right. But now that they're on, we can put the push rod in to hold this suspension arm in place. With the push rods on, it's probably a really good chance to show you how simple it is in its design and how it works. The wheel gets a load, it transfers up to the rocker and pushes on the shock. It's as simple as that. There's no mystery to it or, or magic. Um, and a lot of guys get concerned when they come from go-karts to like an open wheel car and they think it's really complex and, and all confusing and stuff. But really it's, it's the same as any other car. It's just a little bit different in its application. The load still transfers to the shock and instead of the shock being in the middle here or in a strut style, it just transfers through a rocker. So really quite a simple setup. But now that we've got these in, we can put some load on there, knowing that it's supported by the shocky and we're not gonna damage any of the suspension arms. All of that hard work from the last episode can finally pay off. The uprights we assembled in the last episode are good to go to the car. All we need to do is fit a misalignment washer to the bottom to give us a little bit more clearance around the bottom here, then that simply drops in and then we can put the nut on the bottom of it. As simple as that. Now that this is fitted, we can fit the top suspension arm and even the steering arm.
The top arm is a little bit different. It's still got the rod ends that screw in for the inside of the car where it mounts to the chassis, but the outer side where it mounts to the upright, it's got a sleeve and then the rod end. So the sleeve actually goes inside the suspension arm and then the rod end screws into this sleeve. What that means is if you wanna make a camber adjustment is you simply take the weight off that nut and you can turn this aluminum sleeve to give you a really quick adjustment. Still not ideal because it affects the toe, but it's still easier than unbolting, unscrewing the rod end, and then bolting it all back up and checking it. You can actively check it as you move this. So now we can get these bits into the suspension arms and then the top arms can go on. Top suspension arm is now assembled and you can see that aluminium tube that's the out of there. And it's got holes in it so you can easily just stick an Allen key in it and turn it for adjustment. So there's no need to unscrew this. Just simply loosen that nut and you can move that around as need be. Now, before we fit this to the car, the upright's on. With the extra washer in the bottom, that's all the movement we have. So it's not a whole heap of movement, a little bit back and forth as well. It's designed to steer at the end of the day and we have enough adjustment to get the camber where we need it and a bit of caster into it, but that's about it. The bottom of that is built for strength and there's only just enough clearance to do what we need to do. Now, to fit this arm, it should be pretty simple. The mountings are out here. It's the exact height of the steering rack because so are these holes. So it needs to work for the geometry. So that just slipped into the front, rears in, get a bolt in that outer one. We've got another suspension arm on. Top and bottom suspension arms are now on to hold the upright in the correct orientation. It is now fixed. It can still turn, but the camera and caster are now held by all the suspension arms. The weight's taken by the push rod, supported by the shocky. So now we're starting to get somewhere and we're, we're getting pretty close. Next thing up I think will fit is the steering arms. Steering arms are pretty much the same as all the other tubes, just, just a tube with a couple of rod ends in it. This simply goes between the outer hole on this and the steering rack. And the only thing we have to fit is these things to the steering rack. What are they? These are effectively just the steering stop. They simply go on there, the steering arm goes inside that and the bolt goes through the whole lot to keep it all together. To stop the steering rack from traveling further than it's supposed to, it'll do untold damage if it does. So these things are simply a removable steering stop so you can pull the rack apart, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it, get it apart and service it. And as we saw previously, the rack was certainly pulled apart when we got to the car and we, uh, we had bits missing and all that sort of stuff. So these will go on, steering arms on, and then we'll see what else we can fit up. Okay, so a wheel alignment needs a little bit of work and that's certainly something we'll tackle a little bit further on down the track, but the steering arms and steering stops are now in. And if we turn the steering wheel, the wheels move. How cool is that? So that's, that's a major thing off the list. But like I said, when we get a little bit closer, we'll, we, we needed to assemble this to get a baseline so we know where it's at. And then we've got something to improve. So now that we've got it assembled, we can measure it and then set the wheel alignment correctly from there. But, while we're working on the front of the car and doing the front suspension, I'm pretty keen to get it all finished. And there's one more piece that we've got to put on. And that's the front sway bar. It might be a little bit different than what you've seen before, but certainly very common on these styles of car. So let's get the front sway bar and the links fitted up. And this bit right here is the front sway bar. You can get them in different thicknesses and they are adjustable. They're made of spring steel, and really quite nice bit of gear. The mountings for them, a billet block of aluminium with a bearing in it, because like 
the rockers, we want everything on bearing so there's no breakaway load. So everything is as smooth as absolutely possible. These fit just under the steering rack. The front sway bar fits into those coming up the top. From the top, we then have another couple of push rods that go back to the bell crank. So they drive directly off the spring. The same ratio as the shocker and in direct line with the motion of the shock itself. So that being said, we can simply put these together, get some bolts in it, get it fitted into the car, then assemble the push rods. The sway bar link is quite a short link, and in the end of it that goes to the sway bar, it's got that. What that does is slip over the sway bar and provide adjustment. So we can slip that up and down as we need. The lower we go, the stiffer the sway bar, the higher we go, the softer the sway bar, and then we just lock it off when it's in position, when, we, when we're happy with the adjustments that we've made. But that being said, Sway bars fitted, sway bar links are fitted, shocks fitted, bell cranks fitted, and the front suspension is now fitted to the car. To get back to the original question, why did I fit the shocks this way? So the heaviest part of the shock is mounted to the car to reduce the unsprung weight. The lighter we can make the sprung weight on any car, the more responsive that shocker can be and help to control the tire as quickly and as effectively as possible. That's it for this episode. Thanks again for following us on this journey for the Van Diemen Formula Ford restoration. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video when we get the suspension fitted up to the rear of the car.